Advanced technology supports our modern way of life. New technology, upon creation, affects all areas of our lives, changing our thought processes and industrial framework. Recently, there has been a paradigm shift. What then is its driving force? Self-driving cars are drawing a great deal of attention. This new technology is having a large impact on many diverse industries. Car windshields now include information displays and Advanced battery management is possible. Information terminals are also drastically improving. Artificial intelligence and search engines remove unnecessary steps, making life easier for the users. These technological innovations make more people feel safe and content Analytical instruments make this technology possible. Honeywell Limited manufactures a comprehensive line of analytical instruments. Our products cover a broad range of fields from automobile exhaust gas analysis and air and water quality monitoring to blood assay and semiconductor development. Our greatest strength is that we manufacture all sensors that form the core of our analytical instruments at our development centers around the world. This enables us to engineer instruments used across different fields, such as our all-in-one monitoring system. This system combines precision analytical instruments to measure air and water quality, such systems allow us to offer comprehensive solutions tailored to our customers' needs. Horiba also has a manufacturing advantage as we perform all assembly steps in-house. By controlling every process from procurement and inspection to shipping, we can provide fast shipping at a low cost. In order to respond to the needs of our users around the world, our products are organized into five categories based on their operation. Our matrix management system considers each country's market, powering our steady business growth. Analytical technologies are the driving force of the paradigm shift. New services are created by an interdisciplinary combination of advanced analytical technology. Honeywell Limited shines a light on tomorrow with advanced analytical technology, engineering and short delivery times. Good morning, friends. I welcome you all on behalf of Horiba. I'm Kunal Soni, and uh, I'm the host for the today ELF webinar series.
ELF, which is a platform called Environmental Leaders Forum. And this time we are connecting with our customers more digitally to cover the different challenges which we are facing in terms of the stack monitoring, in terms of the water monitoring. So today our main topic will be to discuss about the challenges and solution in process water monitoring applications. I also welcome my colleague, uh, Mr. Evoxi Se from Horiba, Japan, who will be the main speaker for today's topic. To start with, the uh, first I will introduce about the Horiba. And uh, later I will request uh, Evoxi to cover the technical presentation. And uh, this can be followed by the QA session in the last. I request all of you, if you have any questions in between, you can write in the chat box, the right side of your screen, and uh, we will try to address in the end of the session. Horiba Limited. It was incorporated in year 1953, and we have the headquarter located in Kyoto, Japan. Our current chairman and group CEO is Mr. Asushi Horiba. We have the new factory located in Biwako Prefecture, which is called Biwako E Harbor, where we do most of the R&D and the manufacturing of the gas analyzers. Horiba has invested almost 10 billion JPY for this uh, Biwako E Harbor facility. Horiba, we are into five business domain. Uh, first, we are into the automotive test system, where we have the solution in terms of the emission monitoring, also the engineering consultancy businesses. Coming to the second domain, which is called process and environmental. We have the product line related to the environmental monitoring, whether it is under regulation or process monitoring. Third, which is called medical business domain, we have the product related to the IVD, hematology instruments. Fourth segment called semiconductor, where we have the instrument called mass flow controllers, which goes to the process application. Fifth segment called scientific, where we are having the solution which can go to the research and development and the different quality application in industries. Horiba India production and offices. We have the headquarter located in New Delhi in Okla industrial area. We have the branch offices across the India. We have the medical reagent factory located in Haridwar. Uh, we have the Horiba India Technical Center, which is a state of art facility located in Chakan, Pune. And we are coming up with the, another big facility in Nagpur. So Horiba India production and testing facility, which is one of the state of art facility in Chakan, Pune, where we have most of the operations like in-house uh, manufacturing and production facility. We have the engine test bed from the automotive perspective. We have the calibration center for the semiconductor. We have the application lab for the scientific segment. We have the manufacturing and the localization area for the process and environmental segment. As I told you, we have uh, biggest investment in India, which is coming in uh, Nagpur. Uh, that facility is under construction, and soon it will be ready, which is in 12 acres area, where we are planning the different reagent uh, operations for covering the entire India. And also, this facility will help us to serve the all India customers, also the SAR country customers. In process environmental, we have the different product line which serves the solution for the environmental monitoring. We have the stack gas monitor, which we covered in the last webinar. We do have the portable gas analyzer system. We are also into the ambient uh, stack, ambient monitoring, which is in the fixed form, also in the mobile van form. We do have the instrument which is related to the online and offline monitoring of the water applications. 
so i request uh, my colleague evoxi uh, to explain about yourself and uh, explain about the today main topic over to evoxi okay, thank you very much mr kanai okay so my name is I my name my name is evoxi and i am in charge of uh, and i am from holibar advanced techno uh, which is the the water company of holibar limited i am currently in charge of international sales in U uh, america europe and taiwan so my job scope for now is currently hand, uh, handling of uh, water products, especially for processed water, wastewater, and drinking water and drinking water applications. Okay, so as you can see from the picture on, on the middle and on, on the left, you can see that um, there's a lot uh, in Japan. Uh, in the 1950s, Japan has undergone a uh, industrial industrial re revolution. So because of that, there's a lot of waste gas and a lot of waste uh, wastewater that are being released back to the environment without being treated. So because of this, yeah, as you can see on the picture on the right, it is actually a image of a red tide, which is a, a form of eutrophication. So this uh, because of all this waste waste being uh, released to the nature without uh, being treated, it has led to four big main four big pollutions in Japan. Okay, so the four big pollution diseases of Japan. Uh, namely, Itai Itai disease, Minamata disease, Yokai Chiasma, and Niigata Minamata disease. So the main, the main uh, issue, the main culprit of the of the diseases are actually uh, heavy metal, namely uh, cadmium, uh, methyl mercury, and for gas it, it is like sulfur dioxide. So all these um, uh, bad effects has caused a lot of damage to human and the environment. So for humans, some of them got uh, deform, suffer from deformities and so forth. Okay, so because of all these big problems and big pollution, that is the Japanese government has come together and said, okay, we need to uh, have a regulation. So in 1958, they created uh, the first industrial wastewater regulation. So because of this, uh, the regulation has been uh, revised a few times, which is every, every five, uh, six or seven years, they will uh, renew, uh, revise the, the regulation. So in 2003, uh, which is one of the big uh, change, uh, the, the Japanese government introduced two new uh, two new parameters, uh, namely total nitrogen and total phosphorus. So because of this, the the water has uh, the the water quality in Japan has gotten better and better over the, the course of a, a few decades. So as you can see on the right, that is also an example of eutrophication, and that is uh, actually not very good for the water bodies and the aquatic creatures below in the water. Okay, so in Horiba, we, we we have analyzers and we have uh, products. That, that is able to uh, that we have solutions for different for all the process of the, the entire process of the life cycle of water as you can see the life cycle of water has a few pro different process namely service water processing which is for uh, industrial industrial process clean water processing which is for drinking water pure water and so forth and we also have uh, wastewater processing so all this water after consumption has to be treated uh, in the wastewater treatment plant so because of this I will show uh, four different applications okay in factories, in, uh, in in a general factory, as you can see from this diagram, um, there are different uh, different tanks and different uh, equipment that is required. As you can see, depending on the process and depending on the setup of the factory, there is the it may differ a, a, a little. But normally, the the parameters that is that are being used are actually very very similar, like a pH conductivity, uh, dissolved oxygen, ORP, uh, fluoride is fluorine and so and so forth are used in the in the process so this is a general factories wastewater so next i would like to talk about the car factory or car factory wastewater so in the car in the car production factory like a nissan or something you can, as you can see that uh, there are very similar setup as well as you can see there's a raw water tank there is a um, there is sedimentation tank there's neutralization tank and so forth but depending on the application some there might be a few different tanks like a fluctuation tanks and so forth aeration tank and and so forth Okay, so next, as you can see, this is the paper mill wastewater treatment process. So this process is a bit, uh, a lot more simpler. So you can, as you can see, there are actually less uh, equipment and less tanks required. But the, the the core parameters that are being used are still the same, like COD, uh, pH, and and DO, and so forth. Next, we also uh, this is one of the, one of the general example of the food fact, food factory wastewater. As you can see, uh, this is a very similar setup. Plus, there's a, maybe maybe a, a grease trap to, to trap the grease from uh, damaging the pipes and the equipment in the, the process. Okay, so next, I would like to talk about the, the parameters and the process. So, depending on the, the process, as you can see on the, the green uh, the green tab, 
a different process has has a need for different parameters uh, for example ph or orp these are oxygen conductivity and so forth as for example as if you look at pH, the parameter ph you can see that for the pro it is used in the process of a raw water tank uh, aeration tank and maybe process as well then the purpose is to like, monitor the, the, the quality of the waste uh, of the raw water and the monitor of the nitrification condition in the bioreaction tank, which is the digestion tank called as, as well as known as aeration tank. Then the effect is that it optimizes the aeration control and it uh, helps to reduce the water, uh, helps to uh, in increase the water quality and, and so forth. Okay, so um, in Holy Bar, we have a, we have a, a, a long history in, in, in the, the water technology. So in these years, we have uh, we have met very very um, like we ha we have challenges from we have a lot of uh, problems and how do I say like problems that uh, the, the client uh, face. So some of the challenges that they face are uh, there's a frequent there's a need for a frequent cleaning of the sensor. Then it is hard for them to find the right sensor for for the right application that they need. Then there has maintenance issue with the sensor, like a uh, very frequent maintenance is required. Then the, uh, some says that there's a robust, uh, they, they need a like, robust uh, pH sensor because uh, their sensor, uh, their sample contains high alkali and high acidic and fluoride uh, concentration. Then some says that it is very hard for them to uh, measure their sample because the conductivity, conductivity is very low. Next, uh, some says that it is, uh, there's a frequent fl fluctuation in the DO reading. Then for turbidity, uh, they experience challenges such as like uh, there's a need for frequent cleaning and they need a wider range and so forth. So these are the challenges that they have. So as the solution, uh, so so as the countermeasures that we have, uh, Holy Bar designed the the product uh, with three main keys in mind, which is tough, intelligent, and easy maintenance. Okay, sorry. Okay, so for the uh, so for the solutions that we uh, that we propose for the pH and OR, for the sensors sensors in general, especially for pH and ORP, uh, we have made like sensors that are tough and and easy to maintain. So for tough, we have something like a tough response glass, dome shaped design, double ceramic liquid junction, extended lifespan for certain uh, series, the prevention of uh, the silver iron from leaking by using iron iron trap. We have uh, we we adopted a temp temperature compensation. Then it, we have a design that is hard for the, the, the sensor to be clogged by the, the waste. Then for easy maintenance, we have a gel field electric series and we have a dome shaped design for easy cleaning. Okay, and this is what the lineup for the pH, uh, the pH lineup. As you can see, um, we have the general purpose on, on the left side of the table. You can see that we have the general purpose series. So for the general purpose, we have, uh, we have various um, types of uh, sensor for you to, use, to choose from. Like for dome shape, which is a uh, the most general series. Uh, it is the good thing about the dome is, is that it is very uh, easy to clean, easy to maintain, and it has a tough glass uh, response, which I will explain uh, later on. Then for the fixed leaf, we have uh, this, we have this fixed leaf, uh, which is used for applications, especially in the lab, such as uh, like uh, like for food 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 testing, where there is uh, like yogurt, gel, or this very vis this is used for viscous uh, sample because of because of because by by implementing the the sleeve on the sensor, we can prevent the, the waste from clogging the, the, the liquid junction, which is responsible in, in creating, uh, in generating the, the, the electric, the electric motive, motive force for, uh, to, to, to get the reading of the pH. And, and we also have the pH electrodes uh, series, which is the tip, tip version. So all you have to do is that uh, when the sensor is, is, is uh, the lifespan of the sensor is up, all you have to do is to change the chip. So all you have to do is just by the consumable parts of the chip. Then for the special purpose, we have, um, we have the hydrofluoride uh, resistance uh, pH electrode and high alkaline resistance as well. We also have the chip series for high alkaline and the 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 um, high alkaline and the high flu uh, the fluoride resistance uh, sensor as well. Okay, for the ORP series, we have uh, the general series, which is over here, the six eight zero five series. This series is is pretty stable and it, it is stable. However, if you require, if the sample is very unstable, where uh, and if you require a uh, more stability, you can use the, the gold plated series. So by using the gold plated series, you can increase the stability and accuracy of the of the sensor. And we also have the the tip, the chip versions. All you have to do for, for this is similar to the pH. You have all you have to do is buy the, the chip and replace it when the lifespan is up. And we lastly we have the new gel uh, electric series, which is the which I'll talk about on the next slide. 
Okay, so this is the Java Field Electric Series for the PH and ORP. So this is released in 2019. And the key features of this is that uh, it's long life, highly stable, and usability, high usability. So what do I mean by usability? So uh, the, the usability in this way is that uh, we, for the sensor, for normal sensor, um, for a normal sensor, the electrode will have the cable uh, attached attached to the sensor. But in this series, you can actually purchase uh, the, the sensor, sensor and the cable separately. So because of this, uh, we have a connector type and a lead type series as for lead series as well. And for usability as well, uh, it means that we have a lot of various uh, different setup. Like you can do immersion, you can do drop in, flow through, and you can even do on the, the float holder as well. So some of the strength of this is, which is, I think it's the one of the selling points is that, that uh, because this electrode uses gel field uh, uh, internal solution, which is the KCL, there's no need for you to uh, refill the internal solution. So this makes uh, maintenance very, very easy. So all you have to do is to clean the sensor once in a while. Then, and for the clients who experience uh, problems that uh, they say that uh, the, the sample has very low conductivity and they cannot measure. So because of this, we have uh, this sensor is able to measure conductivity of concentration as well as 10 microgiemens per cent centimeter. And regarding pressure, this is also quite, uh, we are, it can also stand pretty high pressure as well of up to 0 0.7 megapascal. And as, as I talk about uh, the installation, there's a uh, the drop in direct, direct insert, throw in, flow through and so forth. Okay, so for, uh, um, uh, how to say, like, uh, our, our sensor in, in, are made in Japan, in the Kyoto factory. So in, in, in the factory, what we do is that uh, we, uh, our sensor, we have the, the dome shape design. As you, can see, as you can see from the picture on the left, by having a dome shape design, you can see that it is, it is long, long, very hard for uh, the waste to, to be stuck on the tip of the, of the sensor. So because of this, this makes cleaning very easy. So all you have to do is just wipe it like this, and you can just clean the sensor easily. Then, as you can see on the picture on the meter, as you can see that um, it is it is dome shaped down, and the, the tip of the sensor, which is on the the, the furthest right picture, you can see that uh, it has a zero, it has an approximately zero point two five millimeter thickness of glass. So by by having this zero point two five thickness, it we we reinforce our glass tip uh, in a way that it is, it is ten times stronger than our conventional series. So. Even though if you were to uh, impact, if you were to like uh, hit the table or impact or drop the sensor vertically in, in a way that it is, the, the, there's a chance that the glass might not break because of uh, the, the tough, or because of the tough uh, response glass. So it, it's reinforced tip against vertical impact. And because of this, we have the high tem temperature and, and pressure resistance as well. And we also have the, the platinum sensor, which is added to the, the, the electrode for high stability and accuracy. And depending on the series, we also have a uh, double ceramic junction. So in case one of the of the liquid junction is is clogged, we still have one one left one one as a as a backup to uh, for it to to flow to to, to to measure. Okay, so next I'd like to talk about PHO up the clean, the cleaning series. Okay, so um, what we uh, what some feedbacks that we always have like a uh, problems that the, the the clients has always tell us. Tell us that uh, they they need uh, solutions for cleaning because uh, the sample is very dirty or because of this we have to do maintenance like once every week and it is very tedious to do the the the, the maintenance. So because of this, uh, we uh, hold, we have uh, we are able to to offer a wide a wide array of, of uh, cleaning solutions. So what we have are mainly four main types of solutions: uh, cleaning kits, which is uh, ultrasonic, jet cleaning, uh, brush cleaning, and chemical cleaning. Okay, so as you can see from this table, um, depending on the process and depending on the contamination type, we actually uh, recommend different types of uh, different types of cleaning cleaning units. Okay, so for example, as you can see for um, the contamination the contamination type, which is a uh, crystalline crystalline scale, you can see that uh, we uh, we we recommend ultrasonic water air jet series and chemical brush series as well. As you can see from the table, it is the double circle means the double circle means that. Uh, it is extreme, extremely, uh, super, it is super effective in cleaning. So like for example, for crystalline scale, we, uh, we recommend a chemical brush. However, we can also use uh, ultrasonic and even water and air jet as well. Okay, so moving on, we have suspended solid, uh, which uses uh, ultras which where we recommend like ultrasonic and water jet for sticky uh, um, contaminations that are used in like starch or clay or lime soil. We use uh, water and air jet. 
Then for microbes, we have like ultrasonic, a brush, and even like water in the air jet, with water in the air jet being the most uh, effective uh, solution. Okay, so now I'd like to talk about the three the, the three different uh, cleaning uh, effects that we have. So first, I'd like to talk about the ultrasonic ultrasonic uh, cleaner. So for the conventional ultrasonic cleaner uses normal oscillation, as you can see on the picture on the left. As you can see that uh, for normal oscillation, the that uh, the oscillator will produce the, the frequency, the ultrasonic in in I mean it will, it will produce the the ultrasonic constantly. So by producing ultrasonic waves constantly. It will damage the the, the the tip of the sensor over time. So what our company proposed is that why not we change the the, the, the wavelength, the, the strength of the of the the ultrasonic once in a while. So what we do is that we do burst oscillation. So by implementing burst oscillation, you can see that uh, we we blast the, the oscillator with normal strength. We burn it, then we use the normal strength again. So by doing this, by alternating this series a uh, week. We are able to create a ripple effect, which allows us to uh, cut the 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 the, 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 uh, the cleaning effect, and because of this, by ultrasonic, we are able to prevent this. The lifespan of the sensor will also be increased, and you can also clean effectively so this is a win for everything so as you can, as you can see on the picture on the on the right you can see that without ultrasonic cleaning uh, in this case uh, you have to do ma manual maintenance like once every week so by using ultrasonic cleaner you can see that after even after 80 days you can, you can still see that the electrode is still um, visible and you only have to do maintenance once every three months but depending on your application it might be more frequent as well okay so as you can see um, without cleaning the electrode on the left is fully covered by the, 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 the waste and dirt in just 20 days. However, with the ultrasonic cleaning, you can see that it is still in good condition after 80 days. So this is why cleaning is, is very important. And when it is not covered by those dirt and stuff, you, you can measure the sample uh, accurately and stably. Okay, next I'd like to talk about the water jet uh, cleaning effects. As you can see on the picture, okay, as you can see on the picture from the right, on the right, on, sorry, on the left, you can see that the, the sensor is fully covered by the, the crystalline uh, substance, uh, the object or substance or something. So you can see that uh, on, on the right, by blasting the the hardened uh, precipitation, you can see that uh, the sensor is still vis is visible after cleaning. So when it is visible, it means that you can clean, uh, you can measure the sample without any problem. And last but not least, we have the chemical cleaning. So as you can see on the picture from on the top, you can see that uh, the, the, the sensor is covered by calcium crystals on the surface, which, which has a, a bit of milky and murky um, um, image. So by uh, using the, the cleaning solution, and by using the, cleaning, the chemical cleaner, you can see that after cleaning, the, the, chemical, the calcium crystals are fully removed and, and you, can, you can go back to uh, measuring the sample and monitoring the water quality. So I would like to talk next. I would, I would like to talk about the challenges and solutions for portability and suspended solid uh, product line, lineup. Okay, as you can see on this slide, uh, this, this table, um, we have we have uh, we we, provi uh, we are able to provide a lot of um, a wide range of um, stability. As some of our clients, they have they said that uh, they need they require a wide range of um, wide range for for stability, and they need. Uh, they have to do cleaning very frequently. So because of this, we also have a good cleaning solution that I will that I will explain later on. So for this, so for now, you can see that the, based on the different model and the different series, uh, we have a different sensor and we have different transmitter. So depending on the transmitter and depending on the on the sensor, uh, we have uh, we have a we have different range uh, different range and applications. So for the first series, which is the two hundred TBW, the first one, uh, it is for wide range, and this is the, the most general series. Then after that, we have the, the next one, the HU200TBH, which is high sensitivity for general uh, clean water. Then next, we have the, e, the EB series, which is for like very clean water, like pure water and something. Then lastly, this is also the very uh, general. Uh, uh, so the first three series that I talk about, the WH and EH, these are all flow through series. Flow through and for wide range, high sensitivity and also has high sensitivity. And for HU200TBIM, this is something that is 
as opposed to the, the conventional series, we have the immersion type series. So this is a wide range, and we can uh you can just you can throw in your sensor into the the tank directly to measure as well. So this we have immersion series as well, which is a a good solution that we can provide for more uh for more installation types. And lastly, for aeration tank, we have the HQ two hundred SS series, which is uh mainly for the mixed liquid suspended solid. Okay, so this is the the, gen the general um, the turbidity for the flow through series. As you can see on, on so please look at the, the black uh, sensor on the, the right. You can see that that is just a sensor. So that series is, is uh, the SS 120 sensor is actually for the clean, the, for, for high, high sensitivity. And that is only the sensor. And the, the furthest picture on the right is uh, the transmitter. So transmitter and sensor is mixed set. And the one below, as you can see, uh, the, the sensor plus a long tube looking stuff. That is the that is the wiper, which is um so uh, by by attaching the by getting this series, you have the sensor and the and the continuous cleaning wiper, which allows you to do continuous cleaning as you measure the the sample. And in our in Horiba, we use uh for our measuring principle, we, we use this transmitted light and ninety percent ninety degrees scattering uh print measuring principle. So as by looking at the the picture on the left, you can see that the L one and B E1, that is, um, the direct blue arrow, it's that one, that is the transmitted light source. So we measure transmitted light. And for L1 and, and D2, that is the 90 degree scattering method. So we incorporate two of these uh, different lights, uh, two different uh, principles into one principle, which makes, so in, in case, uh, so this is the measuring principle that, that is used in, in Japan. Okay, so next we have the, the turbidity for immersion. So this is, Pretty um interest. This is a pretty interesting um sensor. As you can see, that the sensor has the sensor is a, a long sensor, and as you can see on the bottom, the white area, the white area is made of PFA, so it is a uh, high, highly uh, it is strong against contaminant and strong against a uh, high temperature. And not only that, inside the the white area, you can see that there is the wipe. There are wiper blades installed in that, so continuous cleaning is possible as you measure the measure in the, your 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 tank. So this is uh it provides cleaning solution as well as a measuring solution. And you can also measure uh, for white vision. This is generally used for general uh, for general purpose. And not only that, by having by being able to uh, immerse your turbidity into the tank, you have a you have a lot of uh, new applications and you can it's, it's more cost effective and it is more versatile in a way that you can uh, customize your, your tank. Okay, so next I would like to talk about ammonia nitrogen. So this is, as you can see on the picture, this uh, it, it contains the transmitter, the probe, and the sensor. So within the sensor, there is uh, there are three different chips. So all you have to do is to change the sensor chips uh, one when the lifespan is up. So this is actually very cost effective and and it's very easy to do uh, maintenance as well. So I'll, I'll talk about the maintenance uh, later on. Okay, so where do we use um, the ammonia sensor? Ammonia sensor is generally used in area. It's normally used in aeration tank. So why do we need to use use in uh, aeration tank? So the purpose of aeration tank is to do the bioreaction to break down organic matter. So how do we break? How do we so so? Uh, what do we need to uh to activate the microbes to break down the organic matter? We need oxygen. So by pumping oxygen, we will activate the microbes and to to, to digest the, the organic matter. But in most of the wastewater treatment plant, they say they face a very very big issue. The issue is that in aeration tank, forty percent of the Wastewater treatment plant entire electric city cost is from the the the, the pumps the, the air blower. So because of this, if you were to if you were to um, pump air into the aeration tank uh, constantly, it will cost a lot. Of, it will cost a lot of electric city. And by and in this case, we we do not know when the water is clean because we are just pumping water in, into the tank and to activate the the, the microbes. So by using ammonia, we, we can tell that the water is clean already. So how do I say like uh, when the ammonia concentration is low, this means that the water is clean and you can just proceed to the next step. So in this case, you can by process, proceeding to the next step, you can just you can you can save a lot on electric city. And for our for our electric for our ammonia sensor, we use an ISE method. So the good thing about the ISE method is that it does not require reagent and direct immersion is possible as well. So this gives a very high flexibility in, in customizing the tank. And not only that, our ammonia sensor 
it's able to be used with um which is it's, it's able to be used with uh, ultra solid cleaning so this is something that is pretty rare in the industry so because of this we actually have a good success story in america which i'll talk about later on so the first the strength the first strength that we have is, is that as i said earlier is ultrasonic cleaning and if you pay attention to the ultrasonic vibrator on the picture on the, on the left you can see that the vibration is the the ultrasonic is the ultrasonic is being uh, is, is is being blasted from the left to the right so by doing this we can actually prevent the micros from getting into the sensor and we can and we are not and we are not um, blasting the, the ultrasonic directly to the membrane so because of this the sensor life will be will be will be longer and so by cleaning the sensor we are not damaging the sensor and we can prevent uh, dirt from accumulating on the membrane so this is a very good cleaning solution that we propose and the good point number two is the easy maintenance the easy maintenance wait, how do we uh, maintain this easily so as you can see on the picture um, all we have to do uh, during maintenance is to uh, open the, the, the sensor cap with our hand so after opening the sensor cap we can just remove it with our hand and just change the chip accordingly accordingly so there's no need for a screw there's no need for any like um any spam allergy or so forth so everything can be done with just your hand in, for easy maintenance okay so this is the, the case study that i talked about earlier on so this um in, in japan in japan uh, we have the issue that uh, we are spending a lot of a lot of uh, energy in a lot of, of uh, a lot of money on on electricity costs on the aeration tank. So because of this, we, we did a research and we we actually researched and made this ammonia sensor. And as we are as we are researching the ammonia sensor, we found out that in America, they are the American universities and the customers, they are they are also very interested in, in saving the energy. So because of that, we could talk to them and we we got a few customers from them. So um, the main problem is that the local wastewater treatment treatment plant operators, they are not very happy with the competitors' ammonia. Uh, the local competitors ammonia for because the, the measurements are not stable so stability is an issue over here so what we can, what we propose is that uh, we propose this thing and the, the two of the our customers give us a testimony as the left the ammonia uh, the first application is used in ammonia monitoring for wastewater uh, waste for water recycling process as you can see on the guy he, he uh, the guy over there he's rinsing the sensor and he's doing doing this just for pre uh, preventive maintenance once per week only so that is not a lot of hard work and it's very easy to maintain then the second application is ammonia monitor monitoring in aeration tanks so this is the most general uh, usage that we have in japan in, in, in all the wastewater treatment plant and as you can see from the data that they gave they gave us there's a very high correlation with the manual analysis so because of this, we are able to get accurate and stable, a stable reading, which uh, which makes the client very very happy. So the testimony that we receive from them is that Holiba sensor is stable and durable, and the sensor is is only rinsed and wiped weekly as a preventive maintenance. Preventive. So the next testimony we have is that the wide measuring range and fast response. So Holiba sensor is able to firmly grasp the change in water quality. So there is no need for and even after using the sensor for one one year, there's no drift observed. So this is very very stable and it's very very good for the very cost effective for the for the wastewater treatment plants okay so next i'd like to talk about the next lineup which is the conductivity so for conduct for conductivity we have the very general series which is a we have a conductivity for low range and conductivity for high range over here high range so uh, we have the lead type and connector type so depending on your usage you can customize the the you can select the sensor according to your needs and requirements and not only that we also have the resistivity um, um parameter so this resistivity is is used for ultra pure water so usually, usually in process water where they are cleaning water they where they need to need to make ultra pure water so this is uh it's very it's the is similar to the the conductivity series as well okay so next i'd like to introduce uh talk about the reserve oxygen so um one of the challenges that we we see from the, our client is, is that uh their bo reading is not very the dissolved oxygen uh, readings is not very stable and they find very fre frequent uh, fluctuation. So the reason for the, the frequent fluctuation is this. One of the reasons is because of air bubbles present in the in the water. And second is actually that uh, there is, there's dirt being stuck on the membrane. So because of these two main reasons, um, what we do as, as what we propose is that we use optical 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 dissolved oxygen, the DO2000 series. So what as you can see from, from this uh, picture, we have the DO probe, and we have the sensor cap, and we have the sensor cover. 
So the VO probe is the main, it has a lifespan of 10 years. So the, the, the LED light has a lifespan of 10 years. So you, have, you only have to change once every 10 years or keep it, it breaks down. Then we have the sensor cap. So sensor, the sensor cap is where we measure the, measure the, the, the readings, the, the dissolved oxygen. So the sensor cap is a, is a consumable and you have to change it once every two years or depending on your application, it might be faster. Then by taking a look at the sensor cover, you can see that our sensor cover is flat. So by having a flat surface like this, it is hard. It is, it is hard for the the, the dirt to be to, to accumulate on the on the sensor because it is just flat. And because it is flat, it is also very easy to clean. All you have to do is just, just wipe it up like this. So it's easy maintenance, long lifespan, and stable reading. That is just that is just very it's very good for uh, any usage. Okay, next. Uh, so uh, the main key point, as as we said earlier, is uh, easy maintenance, tough and intelligent. So for for easy maintenance. As compared to the conventional um, dissolved oxygen sensor, there is a need for internal solution. But for optical dissolved oxygen, uh, there is no need for internal solution because it, it is optical. The sensor is flat, so this means that it, that it's easy cleaning and there is no warming up time or very, very fast warming up time because for a membrane, you need to calibrate, you need to warm up for like 20, 20 to 30 minutes and so forth. Then we have for easy maintenance, we have long calibration cycle. So by having a long calibration cycle, it means that you only have to calibrate once in a while. Then for tough, we have uh, we have the rugged membrane. It, um, it is uh, we have next we have the flow independent independent, and we have long LED lifespan, which is around ten years, and we strong against uh, noise interference and any interference as well, like bubble interference and so forth. And next we have intelligence. So um, our the transmitter is the transmitter is actually is uh, the transmitter has a built-in self diagnosis function. So when the sensor is lifespan is going is is up, it will just uh, it will just send to the transmitter and tell the, the operator to change the, the sensor. Then we also have a built-in sensor cap memory. So the, the, the calibration data is actually stored in the sensor cap. Sensor cap. As I said earlier, the last, the last point is the sensor cap replacement notification. So when there's a need for when there's a need for replacement, you will just uh, ping it to the transmitter. Okay, so um, for the transmitter, we have uh, this series. So the sen a sensor needs to have a transmitter for it to work together. So for the transmitter, we have the AC powered series and the DC powered series. And for the DC DC powered series, we have the explosion proof series as well. So if you for explosion proof, this is explosion proof transmitter are usually used in a gas uh, gas process of oil company and so forth because as any spark in the, or difference in electricity might cause the the transmitter to, to explode, causing causing explosion. Then next we have the forty eight and ninety six series, the panel mount series. For the panel mount series, we have similar to the H one series, uh, we have the, the AC series and the DC series. And for the 96 series, which is the which is the one on the left, you can see that it is two times the size as 48. So because of this, we have two channels and we have uh, different various uh, features as well, like time proportion and, and so forth. Then, and for the panel mount series, we have to mount it on the on the control panel of the, the clients on the end user. Okay, so this is uh, the, the key functions of our, uh, the interface of our transmitter. So our transmitter have a standard uh, commu communication uh, pro protocol, which is serial RS485 series. Then the power is 90 to 264 volt, which is very, uh, it can uh, adapt, it, it can be used in various um, various um, plants. Then we have two outputs, which is uh, mainly for pH. For, this, for, the, for, for pH, we have the pH and uh, temperature. Then we have one power source for uh, clean, uh, the cleaner. Then we have five main outputs, which is uh, four relay outputs, which is one to four, and one for the cleaner. And we also have a fail alarm as well, which is total six. Okay, so for the total units sold uh, for H1 series is that we sold around 3,029 series uh, units last year in 2019. And the picture on the right is the example of the installation uh, example. You can see that the transmitter is mounted on the pole and the sensor is, the sensor is, um, is 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 in the tank where you cannot see. Then for the panel mount series, the forty eight and ninety six series, you can see that um, uh, it is it is uh, mounted directly into the the control panel of the client, so it is very customizable because of, of its small small size. Okay, so next I'd like to talk lightly uh, a bit of, about the Indian regulation for online monitoring. As you can see on this picture, uh, um. As you can see, um, there are twenty one. There, there are twenty one different applications in, in India, and depending on the application, like uh, aluminium, you, you uh, for the effluent you require pH, DOD, conductivity, TSS, and flow. Then, for example, in sugar industry, you need a pH, DOD, TSS, and flow. So this is uh, this is a table. So please refer to this. And 
for the for final for the final effluent, we we use a a product called the Opsa final series, uh, Opsa hundred fifty series, which is um, which is the picture on the on the on the right. So this particular equipment uh uses the the absorbers, the UV absorbers, and to get a code and to 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 obtain a correlation with the absorbers and the the required um parameter, which is usually in COD. Then for that we can um calculate the the difference and and this um and we it display that in COD reading. So this is used in like in different places as well. Then for for the in 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 India we have the the drinking water application as well. So in the regulation for the drinking water is that um they have like five parameters which is which is color, odor, pH, turbidity, sorry taste, and total dissolved oxygen, uh, total dissolved solid as well. And this is uh, and. And for the drinking water application, as you can see, this is the this is the very general drinking water application. So depending on the process and depending on the tank, the the which process you are in, you use you you require to have a different parameter. Then because of this, we, we have a for the drinking water, we have a, the the TW hundred series. So this TW hundred series has four standard parameters. Then with three optional uh, parameters, which makes a seven a total of seven parameters. So by using this this TW hundred series, yeah, this. Series is usually in, installed in um, the final effluent of the the drinking water plant. So before we send the water to first to, to for normal like schools, house, factory uh, factories, or maybe like uh, office buildings and so forth, we have to ensure that the water is safe. So we install the TW hundred series over there and just measure the seven four to seven parameters. And when it when the level of when, when the level sorry and when the water is of safe level, we just uh, send it out to for, for consumption. So uh, this is the end of my presentation. So next, I, I would like to um, pass on the the, the the presentation to Mr. Kunayo. Mr. Kunayo. Yeah, thank you all of you for your attention. So uh, before going to the QA session, I would like, just like to introduce about our upcoming webinar. Our next webinar will be on 28th April. 11:30 a.m. IST, uh, which will be more on the elemental analysis of ambient particulate matter. So this is quite interesting topic. You might have heard about the PM 2.5 and 10, but we are going to talk else about the elemental analysis. So we request you to please join. We'll send you the invite link uh, by today itself. Okay. So thanks a lot. Uh, there are a lot of uh, questions uh, I can see in the chat box. We'll try to cover and the. Uh, the first question which I could notice uh, from Mr. Akshay that TDA is the main issue with the industry is that do you have the sensor for that? So yes, we have the sensor which is basically the conductivity sensor from that we measure the TDS. So that is the answer to your question. Uh, another important thing, uh, the question from Mr. Nan Kishore, can our sensor is available for the BOD measurement? Again, uh, going to the slide, yes, we have the solution for the BOD measurement by using our OPSA 150 series. And this is the online system where we can uh, monitor four parameters like pH, BOD, COD, TSS based on the UV principle. And uh, another question I could see that uh, from Mr. Pradeep Kumar Saha, that is there any pH ORP sensor which can be replaced with the other main transmitter? Yes, of course. But uh, we request you some more technical input. So our sales team will connect you after this uh, webinar session. Thank you. Uh, I could see the question from Mr. Shavant, which is on, is this sensor will work in the open channel? Yes, of course, we can install this in the open channel area. So not an issue. We can discuss more in the technical and configuration way. And uh, thanks to Mr. Hirdi Pratap. He is from the UP RUVNL organization from Uttar Pradesh Water Treatment Plant and uh, definitely will connect with you after this presentation part. Uh, another question from Mr. Abdul Razak that did this cleaning kit will be useful in the sample tank provided by the Horiba or is it only for the process tank in the industry? So to answer you, Mr. Abdul, definitely our pH kit or the cleaning solution, which we explained in the presentation, definitely we can install in your required area. And uh, I'm sure this can be really helpful to your application. So our sales team will connect with you to understand more the technical part. 
another question that do horiba have the blind sensor with the analog output or modulus communication without display as a cost effective solution yes i think we need to discuss more in detail about this topic but yes we have the modulus facility available with our system we we do have the fluoride uh, online monitoring solution so that is also available with our product range one one more question is there i could not find out the name but the question is why the do required the frequent uh, uh, cleaning so the main reason is uh, more fluctuation in the do which we also covered in the challenges uh, slide so the most important part even what evoxy has explained that there lot of chances of the air contamination and also the formation of the bubble and also the dust it all depends on the water sample condition so our sensor with the special design and technology definitely it can help you to reduce the maintenance what evoxy has explained in the do slide so we can discuss more and i am sure that after this webinar session we will send you this presentation with our contact information uh i i will try to cover one or two more questions uh does the gel filled ph have the temperature compensation yeah it is a very good point uh yes we have the temperature compensation uh, which is in range from minus 10 degree to 100 degree celsius temperature for our gel filled sensor technology and if you have the higher temperature we suggest you to uh, do some sample preparation by cooling it down but yes we can fulfill it and someone has asked about the ammonical nitrogen analyzer what what is the range so our range is uh, from 0 to 2000 mg per liter another question i could see from jayanta sinha what is the range for the do 2000 sensor so our sensor range for do 2000 is from 0 to 200 ppm one question from uh, audience that uh, as per the cpcb guideline for the bod cod monitoring in the 21 different sectors of the industries what solution horiba can provide yes i think we had covered this point in our presentation and uh, we have the solution for that opsa 150 which is the online continuous monitoring system which can give you the ph bod cod and tss and also we can connect the flow if required so we already have the good installation base definitely our sales team will connect with you and uh, uh, one more question that uh, what are the outputs are available from our uh, water analyzer we we have both analog as well as uh, digital output available from our systems so this i think this is all about the what questions we can notice now and uh, i am sure that you have lot of queries and uh, definitely will try to answer all these questions which i can see in the chat box and uh, after this session we will send you the complete presentation and also the uh, qa details by email so i would like to thank you all of you uh, for your valuable time and i request you to be safe and be at home thank you very much we'll see you in the next uh, webinar thank you very much